boys and girls, how you sparks to it tonight. I hope all my first graders are feeling good and that you're having a good week. I'm looking forward to Friday night when we get together again for our club time and uh, talk about our Bible story and uh, work on our scripture verses. So I hope you're all working on your scripture memory too. Uh, let's pray and then we'll have a Bible story tonight. We're going to learn about a man named Naaman and uh, the prophet Elisha and what he did for Naaman. And also in our story, one of the really important characters is a young girl, not too much older than you, Sparks, probably. She was probably a teenager, uh, but um, she plays an important role. So I'm looking forward to telling you that story. Let's pray. God, we thank you for this day. Thank you for all the Sparks being able to um, uh, see this Bible story. I pray that you would help us to understand this story and learn from it, and um, pray for all the sparks. You keep them safe, and their moms and dads and brothers and sisters and grandparents as well. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so we're still talking about the Old Testament, and if you remember last week, we talked about how the prophet Elijah went up to heaven in a fiery chariot, and then that left Elisha to be the chief prophet in Israel, okay? So back at that time, um, there was a lot of uh, fighting and wars that were going on. And one of the countries that was next to Israel was called Aram. And uh, they weren't having an actual war so much, but there would be raiding parties that would go from Aram into Israel and they would attack uh, villages and they would uh, steal animals and uh, money and also would sometimes take people captive and make them slaves. So that was some of what was going on. So this story is from 2 Kings chapter 5 in the Old Testament. And so the first person we're going to talk about is a man named Naaman. He was the commander of an army of the king of Aram. And he had won many battles. He was brave, and the king really appreciated him and thought highly of him. And uh, he was a very special person to the king of Aram because he was such a good general. Uh, and the kingdom of Aram, like I said, wasn't very far away from the kingdom of Israel. And Elisha lived in the kingdom of Israel right next to Aram. Now, there were raiding parties that went from Aram and they'd gone out and had taken captives. And one of those captives was a young girl. And uh, when they took her away from Israel, they put her in the household of this general named Naaman. And she was a servant then. She was a slave in that family. And she was a servant to Naaman's uh, wife. Okay, so she was taken from Israel to Aram. And that was her new home. That was just the way that things were. And uh, what had happened was that Naaman came down with a, a terrible disease. It was called leprosy. It was a disease of the skin. And uh, it was a really bad disease. And once you got it, you had to move away from other people so they wouldn't be affected. And so this made the king of Aram very sad. And of course, Naaman was really upset that um, uh, he, he contracted leprosy. Um, and so when this little girl heard about this, she told uh, Naaman's wife, she said, if only Naaman would go and see the prophet who was in Samaria, that was another name for Israel, he would cure him of his leprosy. And so Naaman asked the king of Aram to write a letter to the king of Israel and tell him, that he wanted to come to Israel and be cured of this terrible disease called leprosy. And so the king of Israel read the letter and he was kind of upset. He didn't really trust the king of Aram. And he's, he was saying, this is some kind of trick. How am I supposed to, to do this? Am I supposed to be able to raise the dead? Am I supposed to be able to cure diseases? He said, this king of Aram must be up to some kind of trick. He wants his general to come here and uh, maybe they'll start a war or something because there's no way that I'm going to be able to cure Naaman of this uh, disease uh, that he has. 
So he, he was really concerned about this. But then the prophet Elisha heard that uh, the king of Aram had asked the king of Israel to cure his general of leprosy. And so the king had, of Israel had been so upset that he tore the robes uh, uh, it, that he was wearing. Again, remember that was a way that sometimes people would re react when they were really upset or sad about something. They would just grab their clothes and tear them. And so when Elisha heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes because he was so upset about this request from the king of Aram, he went to the king of Israel and he said, what are you worried about? He said, go ahead and have this general come here. Our God is powerful. Um, trust me, we'll be able to, to take care of this. So Elisha knew that God had a plan, that, there, that God was at work, and that God would make things work out. So Naaman went with his horses and his chariots and stopped at the door of Elisha's house. Can you imagine that? What if you opened your door and there was a general dressed in his armor and he had his servants and he had people in his army and he had a big chariot and he was outside your door and he said, uh, so Elisha sent his servant out to talk to the general. And so Elisha had told his servant, to, gave him instructions as to what the general was supposed to do. So Elisha's servant went out to the general and said, go wash yourself seven times in the Jordan River, and then your flesh will be restored and you will be cleansed. Well, that sounds like that should be good news. But the general was pretty upset. I mean, he was this really uh, important guy, and he thought, well, why would Elisha not even come out of his house? What, what, what kind of insult is that? Why would he just send his servant? He, he can't even come out of his house to talk to me. And plus, in Damascus, where I live, we have a lot of rivers, and they're better than the rivers, all the rivers that you'd find in the nation of Israel. I could have just washed myself in, uh, in a river in Damascus. This is crazy, I'm not gonna do it. So he was really upset and he just left. Well, later on when he kind of cooled off a little bit, uh, some of his servants came to him and they said, you know, General Naaman, if the prophet Elisha had asked you to do something really hard, you probably would have done it. He said, how much better is this? The only thing you have to do is go to the River Jordan and wash yourself seven times and you'll be healed. What, what do you have to lose? Why don't you do it? It's not that hard. Why are you so upset? And so Naaman thought about that and he said, you know, that's probably a good idea. I'll at least try it. We'll see what happens. So he went down to the River Jordan and he dipped in it once and then twice. And then he dipped in it a third time. And then he dipped in the river again a fourth time. And then he dipped in a river a fifth time, and then he did it another time, six times. And then finally, he dipped himself in the river the seventh time. And just like Elisha said when he came out of the water, after he had cleansed himself seven times in the river Jordan, his skin was perfect, the disease was gone, and he was healed. So of course, Naaman was very, very happy, and he was excited, so he went back with all of his attendants to the house of Elisha. And he called out Elisha the prophet. And he said, and this is really important, now I know that there is no God in all the world except in Israel. So Naaman was so impressed with this that he gave up the worship of all of his other gods, the old gods that he was worshiping in Aram, the idols. And he started worshiping the one true God, Jehovah God, the God of Israel. And then he said, so I want you to accept a gift from me. I'm, I'm like your servant now because you've been so good to me and you uh, helped me get healed from this disease. And so he, he wanted to give him gold and silver and, and, and uh, clothing. And Elisha said, I don't need any of that. It's enough for me that um, God was able to uh, save you from leprosy and cure you from that disease. He said, go and, and go in peace. Now remember, you know, Naaman was sort of an enemy of Israel, but now he was a friend of Israel because he had washed himself in the Jordan River, been healed of leprosy, and that proved to him that the one true God was the God of Israel. And so he was going to go back 
to uh, his home in Iran, and he would worship God from then on. So Elisha told him, just go in peace. And so Naaman went on his way. But that's not the end of the story, because Elisha had a servant, and he was a little bit crafty. He was kind of tricky, and he thought, wow, what a waste that Naaman was going to give us all this silver and clothing. We could have been rich. And Elisha just sent him off, you know, and said, we don't need any of that. So this servant, his name was um, Gehazi, and he followed after Naaman. And he said, uh, General Naaman, Elisha sent me to say that there were two young prophets who arrived at the hill country of Ephraim. Uh, but that was a lie. He said, please give them silver and two sets of clothing. He didn't ask for a whole lot, but he wanted something. And this would have been a lot for um, this servant uh, Gehazi to, to get from Naaman. So he didn't want to get too much, but he wanted to get something. He thought he could get away with it and hide it, and Elijah wouldn't uh, be uh, any wiser for it. And so Naaman said, okay, that's no big deal. In fact, he gave him twice as much silver and clothing as he had asked for. Um, and so then Gehazi smuggled those things back uh, to where he lived with Elisha, and he thought he could hide those things, and Elisha wouldn't know about it. But then Elijah asked him, where have you been, Gehazi? And Gehazi said, nowhere. It was a lie. He says, and then Elisha said, was not my spirit with you when Naaman got down from his chariot to meet you? So remember, when Naaman first came to the house of Elisha, uh, he could have easily killed Elisha and his servant. But he said, my God's spirit was, was with you when you went out to meet the general. He's the one who saved you. You remember how mad that general was? He could have just killed you right there on the spot, but he didn't because God protected you. And now you're lying to me. So Elijah asked him about that, uh, and it, but then he said that he knew all about what um, uh, Gehazi had done, that he had lied to Elijah, that he had gotten silver and clothing from uh, the general Naaman. And he said, and here's how you're going to be punished. Remember how Naaman was cured of leprosy? He said, now you're going to get leprosy and all of your descendants are going to have leprosy. It was a terrible uh, thing because... Uh, even though uh, Gehazi had seen the power of God, uh, he didn't think too much of it. And he, he thought he could trick uh, Elisha, who was a prophet of God, and uh, use what God had done to uh, save Naaman and do it for his own prophet. Uh, and so that was a, a bad thing that he had done, and he suffered the consequences for it. So in our story, remember, there was a man who was an enemy of Israel, Naaman, he got sick, he had a terrible disease, but there was a young girl in, that lived in his house as a slave. And that could have been a really tough thing, being away from her family and her country and living as a slave. But she cared about uh, Naaman enough to say, you know, there's a way that you could be healed if you have to go to the prophet in Israel. And so one of the lessons for this is, even when you're young, you can do great things for God. We don't even know that young girl's name, but what we know is that she was brave and that she did something that had a really big impact and ended up with uh, Naaman being cured of leprosy and worshiping God. And I'm sure that that had a big impact on other people in Aram when this uh, general in their army came back and he said, I'm worshiping the one true God, the God of Israel. And it's all because of the faith of a little girl and her being brave enough to... Uh, uh, tell uh, Naaman's wife that uh, the prophet Elisha uh, would be able to save him from his leprosy. So think about that and remember that God can use everybody, even young people, even young boys and even young girls like you guys. Okay, so uh, let's take time to pray and I look forward to seeing you guys on Friday night and talking about the lesson. Uh, and uh, in the meantime, uh, be safe and work on your verses, and we'll see you Friday night. Let's pray. God, we thank you for this Bible story. We thank you for the bravery and the courage of this young girl uh, who uh, told uh, Naaman's wife about the prophet Elisha and the power of God and 
uh, had the faith and uh, courage to do that. And so we pray that we would learn from her lesson, help us to be uh, brave and courageous and have faith just like that little girl. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, Sparks, that's it for tonight. And uh, yeah, have a good week. And we look forward to seeing you guys Friday night. Bye.